Now the real work begins. Click on Overtime Spreadsheet. Read the instructions box and then click Edit to answer the overtime question, yes or no. If the answer is no, click Save in the upper right corner and then click Mark as complete. This would tell us that you have no overtime to submit for the month. You would then proceed on to the next component. If the answer is yes, click Save in the upper right corner. If you are a 402 contract, you will enter all overtime into the Overtime for General Enforcement box. If you are a 405D contract, you will enter all of your overtime in the Overtime for Impaired Driving Enforcement box. If you have a split contract, your program administrator will provide you with this information and you may be entering shifts into both the 402 and 405 D overtime boxes. Either type of contract may include overtime for educational presentations. Overtime for special projects is used in the event your agency has a separate contract with GTSB for nighttime seatbelt enforcement, speed enforcement, or a pedestrian safety project. These projects have their own grant number and own contract separate and distinct from any other contract type. You can locate your contract type in the grant slash project line at the top of the screen. Once you know your contract type and which overtime box you will be entering shifts into, click add in the upper right corner of the correct overtime box. Complete the fields listed. All of the questions should look familiar until you get to the question total amount of overtime wages from the pay stub. This is quite different from the overtime spreadsheet. If you need to enter a partial number, you must enter a zero before the decimal point. For instance, 30 minutes, enter 0 0.50. For 45 minutes, enter 0 0.75. In the past on the overtime spreadsheet, most agencies listed things in date order. However, it's important to note, this is a new way of calculating overtime. And if an officer or deputy worked more than one GTSB given pay period, you may find it easier to enter each of those shifts using the pay, same pay stub prior to moving on to the next person. Hopefully this will save you a little bit of time. Some agency pay stubs have all of their overtime grouped together. No matter if it was overtime for the agency, GTSB overtime, etc. If this is your agency policy, make sure to enter the total number of hours worked from the pay stub you are working from. For example, in the one we're going to enter shortly, the total number of overtime hours worked is 14, but Andy Taylor only worked 13 hours of GTSB overtime, not 14. You still enter 14 hours of overtime into that box. Other agencies have GTSB overtime split out on their pay stubs and separated from any other overtime type. If this is your agency situation, Make sure to enter the total number of hours from the pay stub from the GTSB line that you are working from. Our example today is Andy Taylor. So Andy Taylor's agency groups all overtime into one line item. You can see that his GTSB overtime shift was technically only 13 hours long, one six hour shift, one seven hour shift. However, in the field for total number of overtime hours from the pay stub, he worked 14 hours of overtime. By entering the information in this fashion, you are no longer responsible for calculating the overtime rate of pay or rounding. We're hoping that this will eliminate many errors that we used to have to send back to you. When you are finished with your first entry, click return to top and then click save in the upper right corner. Andy Taylor's shift that was just entered should now appear in this new electronic overtime spreadsheet. So you can see that Andy worked six hours of GTSB overtime. 
his total pay from the pay stub was four hundred and ninety dollars for 14 hours of overtime. The computer actually calculates the rate of pay at $35, multiplies it by the six hours worked to come up with a general reimbursement of $210. Let's try that again. So this time for Andy Taylor, he worked seven hours of overtime. So we're going to complete this same process for each overtime category in which the shifts were, were worked. If there were not any shifts worked in a particular category, you do not need to do anything. So for instance, do not click add and then enter zeros. So when we're finished entering numbers here, we return to the top. We click on save. And now you can see that Andy Taylor worked two, out, two overtime shifts in the month of October. So the same calculation we went through previously. If you need to make any changes, you can click on his first name, Andy, and make any changes that you need to make. One other note, we are asking now for this number of citations that were issued during this GTSB shift. We mentioned this in our site visits this year, and this is purely because we need to uh, review citations when we come out and do a site visit each year. So in order to make sure that there were citations written, we are now asking you for this information. So that is something that's new. All right, let's go ahead and move on down. At Mayberry PD, Barney Fife actually worked for two hours for educational presentations. He presented traffic safety topics to the local driver's education class. As in the overtime table, you click add, complete the appropriate fields, paying attention again to the total number of hours worked on the pay stub versus the educational overtime worked. And when you are finished, you will return to the top and click save. So now we can see that we have Andy Taylor who worked general overtime enforcement and for educational presentations, Barney White Fife worked two hours. So it's important to write down your reimbursement totals now for each section in which you overtime in, in which you entered overtime shifts. You will need these later when completing your total reimbursement section of your claim. When you are finished entering all of your shifts, click Mark as Complete. This will turn you to the components listing screen. Set your pay stubs aside. You will need to upload them later in the process. Please note, the total hours in this section must match the hours listed in the corresponding monthly activity report. If they do not match, your program administrator will reach out to you to determine which item needs correction and will then negotiate the correct item back to you via the Iowa grants ne negotiation process.